Kristen Wild with Unpretentious Palette is back with us this morning with three courses. How are you, my friend? I'm good. Good to be here. I'm so glad you're here. Um, okay, we have a lot to get into. Let's start with lunch because I have noticed this as well. Trying to make lunch dates with folks, trying to get out to someplace uptown, really hard to find a restaurant that's open for lunch. Yes. Yes, that's something that I thought would be an interesting thing to talk about yeah. today because it's a lot of people have picked up on it, but the reasons why have been kind of iffy. And so I hosted a panel um, in South Charlotte, hosted by South Charlotte Partners, and John Dressler was one of the panelists, and he had made a comment about lunch, and I asked about that, and I was like, well, you know, it seems like p places are a lot slower after the pandemic to open for lunch. Mm -hmm. And he said that right now is just not always the best business de decision to be open for lunch because you have to almost add an entire new staff hour to prep for lunch service. Right. So you're adding a whole new kitchen staff essentially to prepare for the service earlier in the day. And the cost of lunch, you know, people go out on a lunch break, they're a little more rushed, they don't want to spend as much money. Right. Um, they're not usually not drinking, which is a good portion of a restaurant bill as well. So for restaurants, opening for lunch right now is not, not always profitable. Huh, which yeah. is tough because, and I also see it, especially uptown restaurants with people not fully back yes. into the uptown buildings or maybe two or three days a week. Again, there's another yes. wrinkle or another complication to, af to offering a profitable lunch. Exactly, yeah, and if people are you know, in the office five days a week, that's one thing, but like you said, it's, it's up and down, and how do you schedule staffing when you're not sure you know, what's going on in Uptown, what's going on in the office buildings, and so it's really been an upheaval um, for a lot of them, and he said sometimes, you know, with Finn and Fino, they're open for lunch, and he said, yeah. you know, some days, like Fridays are dead, which is crazy because you would think busy. Fridays would be a busy day, but as you mentioned, a lot of right. people don't work in the office on Fridays, and so it's really changed how lunch service works for restaurants. Huh, so now you know, now, now you know. know. So you have to look online first before you yes, try to go anywhere. Yes. Okay, this event, Ramble Pop-Ups. I'm so interested in this. Yes, so Ramble is a new cocktail pop-up um, and Larry Suggs from Humbug is one of the folks behind it and uh, they've gained a really loyal following really quickly because their drinks are so fantastic, but they have a really interesting pop-up coming up on Saturday. And it's at Prime Fish Cellar, which we think we talked about mm -hmm. a couple months ago, but the owner of Prime Fish and Prime Fish Omakase opened up a sake shop. A, they have like caviars and Wagyu beef you can buy there. So a lot of higher end uh, Japanese ingredients. Mm -hmm. And you, uh, they're hosting a collaborative pop-up there and it's centered on the King Musk Melon, which- the King, King Musk, Musk Melon. Melon. There yes. it is right yes. there. So uh, this melon is several hundred dollars for one melon. What? The way they're cultivated is the plants, uh, they grow one melon. They're very, they're hand selected, like the best melon only survives. Um, and so they serve them at, at Omakase as part of the dessert courses. I've had it, like it's, it's incredible. It sounds bizarre, but- Is I it just, worth a hundred dollars? I don't think I would buy the whole melon myself, right. but I would buy a sliver of that $100. You would pay $30 <laughs> for yes. the dessert yes. that includes yes. the melon. I mean, it's so okay. sweet. It melts in your mouth. Um, it's just, it's fantastic. And so it, it really probably is the best piece of fruit you'll ever have. Yeah, the, you know, the high-end opportunities in Charlotte, we're seeing more and more of them, but it yes. sounds like this one and, and that whole, like, everything they're doing over there, yes. it sounds really high-end. Yeah, and, and so with this, this ramble pop-up, it's going to be cocktail pairings with it. So they're going to do sake cocktails to pair with mm. this melon. Um, so you're really getting a cool experience. And how often are you going to get to try a $200, $300 cantaloupe? <laughs> Probably never Probably in your whole never, life, yes. except for this one yeah. opportunity. And that group, too, I mean, like Humbug, that's in our neighborhood. Like, it's just they've got a lot of stuff going on. A lot on. of stuff going on. And so Ramble's popping up here and there um, throughout the city. So you can see on Instagram some other pop-ups they're doing. They're always different, always different themes. So you can, yeah, see them just about every weekend. It seems like they're popping up these days. I love it. Okay, uh, your Don't Miss Dish is always course number yes. three. I hear it popping in the uh, in the QC kitchen right now. Uh, Chef Greg Collier is here. Uh, you say, do not miss the meet and three at Fernwood. Yes, third and Fernwood. Third and Fernwood. So um, Chef Greg Collier and Sabrina Collier opened up their new restaurant recently. Um, and the two of them, everybody know them for their, how personal their food is. I yeah. think um, their stories, their backgrounds are so heartfelt on the menu. And so I think that just makes their food so different and their meat and three particularly. Um, I love sitting down with the two of them because they're always like back and forth, even themselves on like, what's a meat and three dish? I love um, that. And it's just so funny because it, you really see the passion behind it. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, build your own meat and three, go there, pick your protein, pick your sides. It doesn't have to be a meat and three because it's a la carte. So you can do a meat and two. You could do a two meat, two side, two veggie, whatever you want. Um, but everything they do is kind of grounded in that meat and three, but also 
their fun take on it. Uh, I cannot wait to get over into the kitchen. So to that end, remind people about Unpretentious Palette, what the purpose is and how they can find you. Yeah, so Unpretentious Palette is an online publication. We cover restaurants here in Charlotte. We do restaurant reviews, openings, closing news, Q and A's, features, all that fun stuff. So we have a free newsletter um, or you can sign up to become a member at unpretentiouspalette.com. I mean, I feel like I know a lot of stuff, but when I have a question, I go straight to Kristen. Kristen, thank you. I'm gonna leave you because I'm gonna go into this kitchen because when Greg Collier's cooking, I'm eating.